welcome to another installment of our Cook the Book series on YouTube. This is Valerie. I'm Tina. We got the idea for Cook the Book because so many of our favorite fiction books either talk about food, many of them have recipes in them, so we were like, how fun would it be to read a fiction book, get inspiration for then something that you make, a recipe that you make in real life. So that's kind of how it all got started. Um, today we're going to talk about a Susan Wiggs book. It is new. It's called Sugar and Salt. Um, Susan Wiggs has a number of books. I counted we have 11 of them here at the library. And this is her new one that just came out in the last several weeks. Um, it's about, um, the main character is Margot. Um, she grew up in Texas. It was just her and her mom. Um, when she was a teenager, her mom took up with a boyfriend who was not really that great of a guy. Um, and unfortunately, her mom died of an aneurysm. So Margaret was kind of left um, in the care of this uns unsavory character, this boyfriend, and she knew things were not gonna go well. So at age 16, she uh, packed a suitcase late at night, got her mom's recipe book, got in her mom's car, and just drove. And she drove and drove and drove. And um, she ended up uh, being cared for by this couple that owns a very famous barbecue restaurant in Texas. They took her on, looked after her, gave her a job as a dishwasher, and um, they all liked each other very much, and they started to train her uh, in the skills that are needed to be a pit master at a barbecue. Uh, so she started as a dishwasher. She then started tending bar, even though she was way underage to do such a thing. And then they taught her about tending the firebox and all of the other things that going, go into um, keeping the pit functioning. Um, this barbecue place was known for its brisket, homemade sausage, and Texas sheet cake. We're going to come back to the Texas sheet cake in a minute. Um, so uh, Margot learned a lot of skills there and decided that she really wanted to, as the years passed, open up her own barbecue restaurant. She had perfected different barbecue sauces and had grand ideas. So she left Texas and went to San Francisco um, and tried to find investors to invest in her barbecue restaurant. And she eventually finds them, finds a spot to open her restaurant, and the story proceeds from there. Um, the um, barbecue restaurant shares a kitchen with a bakery that's next door um, and there's a lot of um, different relationships that develop and the fun thing is this book is set in San Francisco and her restaurant is directly across the street from the Lost and Found bookshop which she features in another one of her books so I thought that that was kind of fun the way she she tied that in. Um, this cover is one of the most beautiful covers I think I've seen in a very long time. It is lovely. I love what it says on it. Everyone has a past. It's who you are now that matters. Um, and what happens is, without giving too much away, um, she starts to become very successful with her barbecue restaurant in San Francisco. She wins some fine dining awards. And then her past in Texas catches up with her. So the second part of the book is kind of finding out what happened in her past and how that's all going to be dealt with. Um, so it's a really, really interesting book. I think you would enjoy it. And remember I said we were coming back to the Texas Sheet Cake. This book includes multiple recipes in the back of it um, for various things, including Texas Sheet Cake. Um, so when Valerie and I saw that, we're like, we love Texas Sheet Cake. Let's make that recipe. So here we are, and it smells so much like chocolate in here. I love it. It, it really so, does. So good. It does. Okay. So the Texas sheet cake, as far as cakes go, is actually a really easy one. You don't need a mixer. You don't need, you know, I mean, there's lots of little things here. But overall, it's an easy cake to make. Um, so and how you start with this is we're just going to start melting butter. So in this, for this recipe, we need two sticks of butter. You know it's got to be good if it calls for two sticks of butter. Oh yeah. I always say I love any Paula Deen recipe because usually there's at least one stick of butter. If right. Not, two sticks of butter and sometimes three sticks of butter. Yes. Um, Joanna Gaines also. I love Joanna Gaines and 
there's a lot of butter in her recipes. And um, I heard her say once, I forget what she was making, maybe scalloped potatoes. But she said because she was making it on TV, she was making it with two sticks of butter. But when she and her mama make it, it's three sticks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just not better than that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, can't get better than that. No. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to kind of let our butter melt here. So in the meantime, while that's working on it, um, we are going to mix our dry ingredients up. So for this, it's two cups of flour. It's just all-purpose flour. So again, nothing special mm -hmm. as far as ingredients. Um, and then two cups of sugar. So it's got lots of sugar and it also makes it good along with all the butter. <laughs> um, okay. And then a quarter teaspoon of salt. Alright. So then once you have all your dry ingredients in here, I just mix them around so they're kind of mm -hmm. all together here. So then we just go ahead and set that aside. We can get our butter going here. Um, okay. And then also we're gonna mix our wet ingredients up, which is two eggs, um, a half a cup of buttermilk. One teaspoon of vanilla, and I'll be honest, I put two teaspoons in because I like the vanilla flavor, mm -hmm. so we're going to add two. And I know you're using the Watkins, that's such a good... It vanilla. really is. It's consistent, it mm -hmm. keeps its flavor when you make, it's, it really is just good stuff. Um, Alright, so then... So to the liquids, let's turn those up here. It's gonna be kind of thick because you have your eggs in here and your buttermilk, mm -hmm. which is you know, buttermilk's pretty thick liquid. Yes. So. Oh, sorry. I'm like, oh no, it's like okay. stuff everywhere. <laughs> um, and then to this mixture, you're gonna add. Um, one teaspoon of baking soda. Kind of getting there here. Mm -hmm. You know, this would be a great thing. Honestly, you could even do it for a birthday. You could. Instead of having a traditional cake of some sort, this is a cake that a lot of people have had. Maybe not for years, but a lot of people are familiar with it. And, you know, everyone would love this. And I it's chocolate. You could, it's <laughs> chocolate. You could even decorate the top if you wanted to. You could. Um, I think that that would be awesome. And there's a frosting recipe that comes with this particular, mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. her recipe in the mm -hmm. book. And, but honestly, I mean, if you have a favorite chocolate mm -hmm. recipe, you know, buttercream, mm -hmm. whatever, I mean, you yeah. could use it for this. That would be good. But it's, yeah. This also would be a fun thing if you go tailgating or gather with friends in the fall for football games or whatever. Yeah, well, this would be so easy to transport. It's all on your big tray. You take it, you cut it there, and you're probably going to come home with none because they're going to eat it all. Yeah, and it feeds a lot of people because it's That's true. big enough. I hadn't so. thought about that, but yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is true. And the pan, is it just like a sheet pan? Or, I mean, is it? It is. It, this calls for a, um, make sure I tell the right one here, um, a 10 by 13 cookie mm -hmm. sheet that has a rim on it. So, oh, yes. you know, um, mm -hmm. it's not oh. super deep, right. but um, yes. And when I did a test one earlier, I did put foil down in the oven because I didn't want it to drip over. I was uh -huh. afraid it might drip uh -huh. over. And did um, it? It did not. Oh. So. Pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that's very good. 
but yeah, so it fits in this pan perfectly, bakes up perfectly, mm -hmm. um, and then you bake it at 350 for about 20 minutes, and I just took a toothpick, checked the center, make sure it was done, and yeah, so very easy, and that was an easy cleanup too, so, mm -hmm. all right, so, oh, it's not melted. So, also for this recipe then, you have four heaping teaspoons of cocoa. Mm -hmm. So you're just gonna add that to your butter mixture. And then you just wanna stir that around. And it'll be nice and smooth. And oh, that smells so good. It does smell so good. That <laughs> chocolate again is really tasting. I said smelling yummy. It and really I'm sure it will is. taste yummy. Yes. Yeah, you can really smell that. Uh huh. For chocolate. sure. For sure. Okay. 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 And then in part of the instructions, it just says that um, you know you do it until it bubbles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one other thing that we're going to add to this um, chocolate and butter mixture is um, one cup of boiling water. Already made this boil, uh -huh. so. <laughs> um, so just go ahead and add that in there. And then stir that around. So really, this the dry mixture has a lot of liquid that's going to go into it. It really mm -hmm. does. It yeah. really does. There we go. Which that would be what makes it so moist, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, and with the with the frosting, especially if you use the frosting for the specific Texas she cake, which kind of I feel like kind of melts into it. It does, uh -huh. and it like flows uh -huh. over it. Yeah. What, like, I said, when I did my practice one mm -hmm. and poured the frosting over it, it just kind of dripped over the side. So I kept, what I had originally done is kept the foil that I had under the oh, thing. Yes. I just kept it under there. Uh -huh. So I used the grilling foil because it's giant. Oh, And it yes. fits. So I put it under, uh -huh. I baked on the top rack, put the foil on the second rack. So if mm -hmm. it dripped through all, I have yes. to clean as the one rack. Yes, so. that was very smart. Um, I've learned my lesson a few times. That's right. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so this is good. We'll turn that burner off. So, then what we're going to do with this is we're going to pour our liquid into our dry ingredients. So I can scrape out all the chocolate and stuff. Almost looks like hot chocolate. It <laughs> like really does. <laughs> Get some marshmallows. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we just throw that in there. Um, and you know what? If you really did want to get crazy, you probably could put some mini marshmallows in it. Yeah. You know? Um, kind of. Oh, yeah, in there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. So then we're just going to stir this around. And then as you stir your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients, it really starts looking like cake batter. Mm -hmm. Of all that butter in there, and like yeah, <laughs> and then I just kind of mix it around until the lumps are gone, and I make sure everything's stirred up in there. Okay, so then the final thing we're gonna do, if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask for your help with mm -hmm. this. If you yes, just hold this. Mm -hmm. Because there's eggs in here, this is pretty warm. I don't want to cook my eggs when I oh, gosh, pour this in here. Yeah. yeah, so um, just kind of temper it. So I just pour a little bit in at a time and keep stirring. So if you have something to help you hold your cool, or if you have a way to do it, you can always, if you have a stand mixer, oh, right. prepare it in the stand mixer yeah. base. You don't have to use mm -hmm. the 
mixer itself, but mm -hmm. it would hold your bowl yeah. for you. So that would be helpful. Oh yeah, that'd be tragic if it got all clumpy with yeah, legs. It really, it really <laughs> would. So yeah, it's just best to have a uh, Those people that has to like scrape the bowl out because I don't know. <laughs> Get all the good stuff. Yeah, make sure it's all there. Okay. Alright, so then once you mix it up, it's just all just looks like cake batter. And then so when you're all done, you just pour it into there. Mm -hmm. Um put it in your oven for say, about 20, 25 mm -hmm. minutes. You might be a little longer depending on your oven. Um, but I would definitely check it at 20 minutes because mm -hmm. that's what the recipe says. Because mm -hmm. um, you don't want to overcook it. Yes, and so, do the toothpick. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely do the toothpick. Um, and I would suggest a wooden toothpick or skewer over a knife mm -hmm. just because I feel like it, it's a better judge of it. Yeah. Yes. Oh gosh, it smells so good in your house. It will smell so good too if you make the Texas sheet cake. It will. Um, so, hopefully, you'll pick up a Susan Wiggs book at some point. Um, the newest one really really good um, maybe you'd like to read one of her other ones um, most of her books even though they may reference things in other books are freestanding you don't have to read them in order so that's always a fun thing um, we hope to see you soon at the library and hopefully you've enjoyed our cook the book we'll see you next time